one. Hello, back again, 2-2. Two -two. We're going to be learning about epithelium, all the different tissues that line and cover your body and organs. Epithelium is uh, kind of a fun one because I got cool cells that make up them. I apologize, this is a long one, so get ready, here we go. Alright, epithelium. Tell me about epithelium. Well, first of all, they exhibit something called cellularity right here. Cellularity, which means that all the cells tend to be close together to each other. So there's not a lot of space between them. So as you can see, all these cells are pretty uh, tightly packed in there. They have very specialized contacts. They have something you may remember called desmosomes from either biology or EP. And those are basically uh, interlocking pieces that allow the cells to stick together very tightly and allows them to communicate to each other uh, quite easily. They also have something called polarity. They have an apical and a basal side, which means that, pardon me for a moment while I cover this up, I need my pen, they, uh, sometimes they're very tall like this, okay, and so they have a top end, this end, which is open to the environment. Sorry, I lost my pen, so I'm using my finger to draw so it doesn't look very well. And they have a basal end, which is closed and usually attached to something else. So the open end refers to the fact that the open end does not touch another cell, not that the cell itself is open. Okay, let me get that out of the way. Uh, where's my pointer? There it is. Okay. Uh, they are also supported by connective tissue. As you can see, this dark area, or it's kind of pinky right there, that actually is a layer of connective tissue that's holding these two different epithelia together. And so uh, you'll see that a lot of the cells kind of all anchored down to what's called a basement membrane, and that's the connective tissue that we'll see. Um, epithelial is avascular. A means without. Vascular refers to arteries and veins. So there is no blood supply to them. So how do they get their food? Directly through diffusion. They're also innervated, which means that they do have nerves. So even though they don't have any blood vessels, they do have nerves, which is why your skin is able to pick up information. So you're thinking, but how come when I cut my skin, it bleeds? That's because your skin is so thin that you've actually gone down to the deeper layer that's under the epithelium, which is connective tissue, which is full of blood vessels. That's why if you get a blister, you can peel that upper layer of skin and it doesn't bleed because the epidermis itself does not have any blood vessels in them. And epithelium can also regenerate quite quickly and quite easily. So there's always a good amount of cell division mitosis going on in epithelial tissues. You'll see me say the word epithelium and epithelia. Uh, with the A, uh, is actually the plural. So instead of saying epitheliums, it's epithelia. So it's not that I'm saying the word wrong, it's just us the plural. Okay, how do we classify our epithelium? Well, they always come in two name systems. The first name has to do with how many cells are there. So if we use the term simple, then that means there is a single layer of cells. So like this dude, this dude, and this dude right here all have a single layer of cells. And see the purple underneath? That's that connective tissue that it's attached to. So this is the basal side, and this part on top, which is open and not touching any other cells, that's the apical side. Okay, so the first word is either going to be either simple or stratified. Stratified means layered. And so as you can see, there's multiple layers in these uh, different type, and so therefore it is stratified. So the first word, simple or stratified. The second word has to do with the shape of the cell. If it is squamous, squamous, that's a fun word to say, it, squamous. Sounds like Dr. Doofenshmirtz, squamous. All right, so squamous means it's flat and tile-like. So now this one, you're looking at it on edge as opposed to flat. So imagine a pancake. A pancake is a squamous-shaped cell. But when you look at the pancake straight down, it looks big and flat and round. But if you look at the pancake on edge, you only see this little flat portion. So that's what you're seeing right here, is you're seeing the pancake on edge. So if I layer a whole bunch of pancakes on top of each other and make a stack, now I have stratified squamous. So if it's just a whole bunch of pancakes side by side, whoopsie, then you've got yourself simple squamous. But if I stack them on top of each other, I get stratified squamous. Now cuboidal is pretty simple. It's in the shape of a cube. And so they're perfectly square, usually. 
And so simple squamous is just a nice simple row of cubes. Where a stratified squamous, usually you don't see more than two layers on the cuboidal. I'm sorry, I said squamous, didn't I? Cuboidal on the stratified cuboidal. They're still mostly cube shaped, but notice they tend to kind of fall into each other and get a little bit of a hexagon shape kind of going on. Um, but you'll still be able to tell that it's mostly a cube. So simple cuboidal and stratified cuboidal. And then the last one, columnar, and you got the word column in it. it makes sense because these are tall and column-like. And so we can see that this is simple columnar because it's just a single layer of columns. And here is stratified columnar, which is two layers. Now we do have this one funky one called pseudo-stratified. It's because it's still one single layer, but the way that they grow and they're very crowded and bunch all around. Notice on this one how it's a single file of nuclei. On this one, it's two distinct rows of nuclei. But notice this one, the nuclei are just kind of all over the place. That is pseudo-stratified. Pseudo meaning false or fake-like. And stratified meaning it kind of looks stratified, but it's really not. So it's a fake stratified. So pseudo-stratified. So we're going to go over uh, some basics of each one. So starting with simple squamous. And yes, I put pictures in the back to make you laugh. Simple squamous. So we're talking flat pancakes in a single line covering up something. So they're flat. They have very little cytoplasm because they're squished really tight, so they don't have a whole lot of room for cytoplasm. Pretty much it looks like a tiled floor. So if you look down at your floor, and if you're not sitting on carpet, you would say, hey, it kind of looks like my floor. They are normally used for filtration and exchange of materials. So we see a lot of this in areas where there's um, like the lining of your intestines, where there's a lot of exchange of materials, ions, food particles, whatever. So we see a lot of simple squamous there. It can also be found in your kidneys because of the filtration aspect and in your lungs the exchange of materials oxygen and CO2 very easily to go through. Um, there's two types of simple squamous epithelium that we're familiar with. Uh, one of them is called endothelium, endo meaning on the inside, and this lines the hollow organs of the cardiovascular system. So inside of your heart, if you were to chop open your heart and look inside the uh, atrium and the ventricles, you would see a, a thin layer, a tissue called endothelium. And then we have something called mesothelium, meso meaning in the middle, and this is where we get the term mesothelioma, which you always see those commercials about on TV. These guys, it's a, it's a tissue that's found in the serous membranes. And so remember the serous membranes, visceral, blah, 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 parietal, blah, blah, blah. So this is one of those. It's in between those layers there. And uh, so if you get an infection or a cancer of those layers, that's when they get the name mesothelioma. All right, next slide. Coke break. Like I said, share with a friend. I'm sharing with you. All right, here we go. Mm. Okay, um, here is a picture looking straight down on simple squamous epithelium. So it kind of looks like frog eggs. If you've ever seen uh, frog eggs laid in a pond, probably not. This is what they look like. So it looks like a tiled floor with a little bitty nuclei in between. Here's another picture just showing um, different ways to stain them. And this one down here, what I like about this one is you're looking at the pancake this way. So the top two, you're looking this way, but the bottom one, you're looking this way. So this is in your lungs, and these are all simple squamous epithelium. All right, next one. Cuboidal, simple cuboidal. Yeah, I think it's sharks. Yeah. All right, simple cuboidal epithelium, still one layer because of the simple. It's as tall as it is wide, so therefore it's a cube. And they are pretty much used only for secretion, so producing things and absorption, pulling things in. The main place we find this is in your kidney tubules. So the parts of your kidney that filter your blood to pull the nasty stuff out, we will find tons of simple cuboidal epithelia in there. So I like these. I think they're pretty. Um, that could just be me. So you're looking at this and you're going, but there's two layers that's uh, stratified. No, no, no. This layer in the middle, that's the basement membrane. That's the bottom. And so this guy is, I guess you would call right side up. Here's the apical side. Here's the basement or the um, uh, basal side. This guy's upside down. Basal side, apical side. So really it is just one layer, but they just happen to be back to back. Same thing over here. I took a single layer and folded it in on itself. So this is a single layer in a tubule of the kidney. 
nice big fat nucleus, kind of square-ish, and then a hollow area inside. And then there's a the basement membrane again right there holding onto it all. Here's a diagram just kind of showing you how that works as well. So single layer of squares, basement membrane, and then they can wrap around themselves to turn into a duct. Not a duck, quack quack, duct. Okay, simple columnar. So the guys that kind of look like this. And these guys are found in your digestive tract. They're used for both absorption and secretion. So they can secrete enzymes, they can secrete um, mucus, they can secrete all sorts of nasty things that go in your gut, but their main thing is for absorbing all those nutrients that you have just digested. They have a dense layer of apical microvilli. So apical, meaning on the, the head side, microvilli, little villi. Villi, remember, were little fingers. And so those are used for absorption. I'll show you a picture in just a sec. And they have these lovely things called goblet cells. Goblet refers to a cup shape. So a goblet cell is a cup-shaped cell that is used to secrete mucus, and that helps to uh, propel things along inside of your gut. So here's a uh, single, a simple layer of columnar cells, and we can see that the nuclei are relatively all in a line. Here's a diagram showing you the same thing. So here's the apical side, open to the environment, basal side, has a basement membrane attached to it. This is loose connective tissue, by the way. And then same thing over here. Now what you're not seeing up close is where that arrow's pointing, there is a very thin layer of little hairs, cilia basically. Those are the microvilli. And so this is a section taken from the small intestine. You can see they're all lined up, all the nuclei are lined up quite nicely, and that makes up the simple columnar epithelium. Now stratified squamous, so now we're stacked pancakes. Stratified squamous is good for protection because they can rub off. If you ruin the top pancake, who cares? You got another one underneath ready to go. So it's really used for protection. The apical uh, side is always flattened, is always squamous, but what's interesting is stratified squamous actually turns into, as you move down, cuboidal or columnar cells. So it's like having a stack of pancakes that start out very thin, but as you go down, the pancakes get thicker and thicker and thicker. The surface is always being worn away, um, so that's why you could take toothpicks and get cells from inside your mouth on your cheek and look at them under the microscope because you always have more right behind it ready to take its place. We find stratified squamous especially in your outer skin and in openings, so your nose, your mouth, your ear, your eye, other openings. And uh, the outer epidermis is keratinized. Keratin is the same stuff that you find in your fingernails and your hair. And so, like your elbows, you know, they're really rough, and that's because of the increased amount of keratin. So the harder your skin is, like the bottom of your foot, your, especially your heel, that has a lot of keratin. If it's really soft, like this area, ooh, my hands are dirty, in this area here, then there's not as much keratin. So here's a picture of stratified squamous, and you can see here's the flat pancakes on the top, and then lots and lots of layers, and then by the time you hit the bottom, which is this wavy line right here, now they're kind of square cuboidal. Here's another picture showing it a little nicer. And this is the open end, the apical end, which constantly gets sloughed off. And they start out kind of flat, but then look, they kind of turn cuboidal or columnar at the end. Here's another picture, a nice drawing that represents the same thing, quite nice. All right, next, stratified cuboidal. Very rare, hardly ever do we find this in your body. We only really find it in some of your sweat glands and in your mammary glands. And it's only in the duct part, so the tube that leads out of your body. So not very common at all. So as you can see, they like to form ducts, so they form little uh, tubes like this. So here's the open area, it's called the lumen, set open area. And we can see it's not a single file of nuclei anymore, there's, it's all crowded in there. So that's how we know we've got stratified. You can see there's a nice layer right here and then another layer of nuclei right there. Here's the lumen in the middle. And then here's another picture. These are sweat glands. So every time you sweat, these guys are going to town. There's a lumen in the middle, and you can see two layers of nuclei around it. So sweat memory glands, that's pretty much it. Stratified columnar, so the two layers or more of columnar epithelium. Again, very rare. Pretty much only found in your pharynx, which is uh, back in your mouth where uh, food and air can go. The male urethra, don't know why not the girls, and in some duct lining, so we don't see that very often. But if we do, it looks like this. 
So we can see there's two layers of nuclei in here. These little guys are goblet cells, by the way, these round shaped things. They kind of look like wine glasses. Over here is another picture. Here's your first layer down here. Here's your second layer on top. And then down here, here's a picture showing um, the two different layers as well. All right, next is pseudostratified columnar epithelium. So this is, even though it's simple, it's one layer, it looks like it's two. So it's because the nuclei inside have different heights and they're all squished and tangled together so it looks like there's double layers. So it looks like it has different layers. Usually we find this in your trachea and your lungs, lines to the respiratory tract. And it looks like this. So you see the basic columnar-ish going on here but then it's just a, a mess of nuclei. Here's a drawing that shows it quite nicely. The nuclei are up, up high, down low, and you see sections of cells because they're kind of all squished together. But the main thing is just nuclei all over the place, just all over the place. Here's those uh, microvilli I was telling you about. Kind of looks like a sea anemone or something like that. All right, and then we have this one funky type of epithelium, which wasn't mentioned before, because it doesn't fit under stratified or squamous or simple or columnar or cuboidal or any of that. Um, it's, its 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 own funky thing. It's called transitional, because depending on the state your bladder is in, it could be one thing or another. So it transitions from one to another. And it only lines your bladder. That's the only place you can find it. It's very stretchy because think about it. Empty bladder, full bladder. Empty bladder, full bladder. It's so got to do that how many times a day? So it needs to be stretchy. It's kind of like a balloon. How a balloon can stretch and then it can shrivel up, stretch, shrivel up, and so on. So very, very stretchy. The basal end is either cuboidal or columnar. So depending on if your bladder is full or empty, it will look very different. So here is your bladder. And so you can see this one, it's, ooh, it's hard to tell. It just looks like a giant mess of nuclei is pretty much it. So if you see just nothing but nuclei and you can't pick out anything else, it's probably transitional. Here's a picture showing that we've got some pseudostratified columnar going on over here. We've got some basal over there. And again, depending on if your bladder is empty or full, they can be totally flat and stretched out or they can be big and round. So it all depends on if your bladder is full or not. Okay, that was a lot to take in. It's 17 minutes. I apologize again. Um, but most of it's just me yapping about stuff. So I apologize. Anyway, uh, good luck, guys. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.